Academia. Hello and welcome to the My Hero Academia podcast, episode 66. Today we will be going through anime episodes 17, 18 and 19 as there is no manga this week. So the news is that there is going to be a character guidebook coming out called Alter Analysis. It's coming out October 4th. It's going to be like all in Japanese, but hopefully we'll get some cool details because we're going to, we're going to learn Hawk's real name. I, I say it's going to be like Colonel Sanders or something. Like It could be very birdy. <laughs> Interview with Horikoshi and uh, Kubo, who I think is the Bleach author. Yep. Yes, it is. Yay. And that'll be kind of interesting. I, I wish he'd interviewed Ta- I think he has talked to Oda before. There was one, I think, of that. I don't know. Cool. So we're starting with anime. Oh, hello, I'm here. I'm so Oh, yes. <laughs> I did not introduce anyone. <laughs> Who else is here with us? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I am here. <laughs> yes, we have uh, the co-hosts for the Kicking Stones podcast on with us. Woo. You guys have four episodes out or three? Three? Three. We're supposed to do our fourth episode, but uh, I'm just waiting on my co-worker. <laughs> mm. Cool. Yay. Um, so we're starting off with anime episode 17, and we start off with an out- overview of how the um, cavalry battle will work. So you've got a team, you can have either two or four people. They carry one person on the top, and um, they need to keep them on top at all times. The person has a, has a collective score of their headband that they can ha- wear anywhere from their neck upwards. And you have to try and keep your headband safe while stealing other headbands. The people that will go through to the next round are the top um, four teams or not necessarily top four teams because there are quite a few teams from class B which are just two people Hmm. so they just need 16 people to go through really Um, when your headband is lost you are not out of the game you keep on going but you do get a red card if you purposefully try to knock someone else off and you get disqualified and when that's announced we see Bakugo have a little huff (laughs) (laughs) Um. We have a little scene where we're going to the pro heroes and they're talking about how the, the cavalry match is about um, teamwork with people that you might be seeing as your rivals. Mm. And I was a little bit disappointed that Death Arm smokes. Yes! <laughs> and also, like, yeah. they're in an enclosed space, so it's, like, rude. Surely that's... What are the smoking doors in Japan? Is that not illegal? You can you can smoke indoors. Ew. Think. Yeah, that's gross. <laughs> That's disappointing. Let's carry on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so we can next we can see Shoji, Mina, Hagakure, Sato, Sarah, and Aoyama all begging to be on Bakugo's team. Oh, really quickly, I wanted to point out it's really funny that go- uh, oh, oh, Camwe Woods. I almost called him Golden Camwe. He can't drink out of his water bottle because he won't take off his mask. So he's I just... saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like... wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like why why like i guess maybe he, he's really committed to a secret identity but couldn't he just like make a hole in his mask like he can control wood right <laughs> yeah yeah i don't, I don't know, know. <laughs> that was pretty funny though <laughs> oh, oh have a little straw <laughs> <laughs> a wooden straw yeah exactly that would be amazing but sorry i interrupted um but yeah so i'm surprised that shoji was trying to get on bakugo's team i don't know why i was just surprised by it i think aoyama Um, was too yeah he was trying he was asking to be on his team while kind of grabbing his stomach and looking terrified of the arm like begs (laughs) Mm -hmm. um kirishima then comes up to him and he had actually gone to todoroki first yeah he wanted to be on shoto's team but shoto had already made his team so he's like oh all right Bako, Bakugo, I'll be on your team. You need someone strong enough to take your blasts. I can do it. Mm-hmm. And then he reasons with him by like being like, let's win. And yeah, he gets on. And he kind of gets another, um, let's go for the 10 million. So he knows like he's aiming for Deku. And yeah. it's kind of funny that he makes fun, that Bakugo makes fun of his hair. And Kirishima's like, we have the same hair. And honestly, when I was reading the manga, I confused them a few times because their hair is very similar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I'd like to add that... Uh, Bakugo just doesn't even remember his classmates' names. <laughs> he just goes by their quirks. <laughs> he doesn't even know their quirks either. Oh, yeah, like, that's true. <laughs> some of them he does, but other ones he's just like, what, you, what can you do again? <laughs> yeah, such a jerk. <laughs> yeah. He then sort of chooses his team, and we see Shoji walk off, and Mineta is trying to be like, 
hey, no one wants me on their team, be my team. He then comes up with quite a good um, plan, which Shoji agrees with. And I hadn't heard Shoji's voice before, and I really like his voice actor. And it's kind of funny, like, Minetta can barely talk to him, he's so small. Well, Shoji is, like, over six feet, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's like, hello! And he's like, what? Someone's trying to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> the thing he's got all those extra ears. Mm-hmm. Um, we then, Izaku's panicking about who's going to be on his team and no one wants to be on his team. They're all avoiding him. Mm-hmm. Um, he goes to Ojiro as well. <laughs> the first person we see him approach is Ojiro, who just kind of backs away. And then we get the epic heart squeeze where mm-hmm. um, Ochiko came up to us like, I'll be on your team. <laughs> yeah. Very cute. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they decide that it's better that you should team up with people that you trust. Um, he, they then go up to Ida. They tell Ida their entire plan yeah. before he then says that he's already in a team with someone else. And I feel like that was that's really disingenuous of Ida. He knew yeah. he was on someone else's team, so he shouldn't have listened to their plan. Yeah, he heard them out first. <laughs> they just kind of like wouldn't stop talking, though, so he didn't really get the chance. No, he was bent forwards in a little huddle with them. If you oh, didn't yeah. want to some plan, you wouldn't huddle. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. And the episode is titled Strategy, Strategy, Strategy. So mm-hmm. that was his strategy to uh, fool Deku, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Get some intel. Maybe he did just want to. I don't know. I just thought it was a bit off brand for him. He wanted to like. He wanted to hear him out at least. Like maybe like he had to hear him out, but still be like, no, I already got an offer. I don't know. Yeah. Eat immortals. He probably has like a, some kind of honor system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We then look around and we can see the other teams that have formed. And Todoroki has formed his team with Momo, Ida and Kaminari. And Bakugo in the end chose um, Kirishima, Mina and Sero. Um, and then as he's trying to think of who else to join, that is when the brilliant Hatsume Mei from the support team <laughs> comes up to him and starts talking about her babies. And Oshiko just says, hey, you're that weirdo. <laughs> That's a nice way to like. Someone's coming up to you saying they want to work with you. That's not a nice thing to say to them. And also, Ochiko later is like, did you bring babies here? She's like, no yeah. idea what she's talking about. Their rivalry starts straight away. Yeah. Um, but Mesa explains that she's got all these gadgets and goodies from her support team that they could use to help. So she's in. She's part of the team. Mm-hmm. And then I've written down all of the teams for Class 1B. But we're not doing spoilers until the oh, end yeah. so yes. i'll talk about the teams at the end when we do our little spoiler segment mm-hmm. um so then we're waiting we're finding out who's going to be the next member is who knows we get a tense moment where we think of who it is and i know that i've seen this multiple times but i always forget that it's tokoyami <laughs> <laughs> i was genuinely so nice. like who's it gonna be who's it gonna choose <laughs> their basic ploy is just to run away <laughs> Izuku says that Dark Shadow is going to take care of omnidirectional mid-range defences. It makes me think of, have any of you guys read Ender's Game? No, I haven't. No, but I recognise the name. It's basically kind of like the idea of fighting in zero gravity, so you have to think of like every direction, and since they're floating, they have to do that. I just like that instead of saying you can protect us from all angles. He said, you are in charge of omnidirectional mid-range defences. <laughs> and then they get attacked by Jozu Hononuke. Mm-hmm. The best one. They're, yeah, they're pulled into the ground. They don't know what's going on. But May's jetpack is strong enough to pull all four of them out of the sludge. I know that Ochako is making them float, but that's still pretty impressive for her little jetpack to mm-hmm. pick four of them up. I think the jetpack is only lifting Ochiko then, because she's like floating everybody else or something. She, they've all got, um, they've got things on the bottom of their feet. Ochiko's got things on the bottom of her feet, but I think Izuku's got it on his back. Mm-hmm. And everyone else is kind of holding on to him. I don't know, yeah. Mm. Izuku compliments May, and uh, Ochiko gets jealous for the, <laughs> the first of many times in the future of the series. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and it was, just, it was just kind of funny that I realized, like, oh, yeah, Dark Shadow can talk. And I always forget that for some reason. He's so funny. He's so dramatic. Um, Such is the fate of the pursued. 
and he takes like any he for some reason decides that Deku is like his absolute leader and he's like what do you want Deku like what should I do like you chose me and it's like okay Tokoyama you need to calm down <laughs> I wonder if because they all know that Izuku's clever mm-hmm. so I wonder if he's just like paying to someone else's strengths mm-hmm. and also Izuku's on top so he's got a better <laughs> view I, I, I just I like he's he's higher up, so he's more authority. Uh, we then see that Hagakure has lost her band, her headband, five minutes in to Monoma, <laughs> and I like the whole way through. Whenever we see Hagakure's team, so she's on top, and then Jiro's at the front, and at the sides is um, Sato and Koda, and she's obviously up there topless. <laughs> While they're at the sides holding up, so her boobs are kind of right next to their faces, and every time you see their team, they're really blushing. <laughs> <laughs> so all jokes about Mineta aside, he throws his little balls and gets them caught on um, Ochako's like jetpack shoes that's been helping mm-hmm. them off the ground, and it breaks on the shoes. But if he had got them all down with his sticky balls, I think the team would have been completely out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean- Mineta is kind of terrifying because so far we haven't seen anything can, uh, that can unstick his his sticky stuff. I'm not saying balls. <laughs> besides, like him, which is kind of terrifying. Mm, yeah. yeah. But anyway, they manage to avoid, and she just breaks on the shoes. So they can't use the jetpack anymore, so their maneuverability is slightly stuffed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then. At the end of the episode, we learn about Class 1B's subterfuge. Where they had all kind of planned in the first round to hang back so that they can watch Class 1A, find out all their strengths, and then try and sum up their weaknesses to attack in this next cavalry round. Mm -hmm. Uh, And he points out that Bakugo is always in the role of the victim against Mm -hmm. the sludge and then against the villains. And also, the Bakugo kill count is up to nine in this episode. I found my kill count again. So Brilliant. Or no, maybe it's ten. I think, actually, sorry, it's up to ten now. And the next episode goes up again. It's up to ten. It's going to get steadily higher. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the episode ends on this is really stupid. So they've just lost their maneuverability. They've got a few minutes left. And Izuku's like, oh, I think we're going to be in the clear now. And then Todoroki turns up. It's like, no, he's a coo. You're not in the clear. You can't fly around anymore. What are you going to do? Uh, but I also liked when Bakugo goes, like, jumping. He does this, like, really silly, like, giant jump. Or is that in the next episode when he does, like, the... He's just, like, soaring in the air. I think that's the next episode. Ah, uh, okay. Sorry. I really like Class 1B strategy, and I'm kind of disappointed that more of them didn't make it through. But we can mm. talk about that more in the spoiler section when we talk about their quirks, but hopefully but it's next nice. time. It's nice that we get, like, a little tease of them, and it's cool that we get, like, a bunch of new characters. You're like, wait, what can they do? It's like, I don't know. It makes the tournament really fun. Cool. And then episode 18. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so episode 18 is titled Cavalry Battle Finale. Mm. And we start off with uh, uh, Mineta somehow loses his headband, even though they were, you know, hidden behind Shoji's uh, technical arms or whatever his cork mm-hmm. is. But, you know, Mineta's kind of pissed about that. He's like, you know what, let's just go full on attack mode. Mm-hmm. And I like that scene because you just see Shoji just open up his arms, just ready to attack. Mm-hmm. And they go after, uh, I believe they go after Deku's team for the 10 million points headband. And Todoroki is able to mobilize everybody with his uh, with his ice. And I think I'm skipping and, something there. Oh, Kaminari does this like ridiculous shock that should kill people. But yeah, we had Kaminari do his 1.3 million undiscriminate uh, bolts. I think is what his attacks called. Something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. After that is when Todoroki ices them all. Thank God, because if he t- <laughs> if Todor- if uh... Kaminari had, I don't think he would even have the stupidity to do that, but if he'd shocked them all when they were iced, they then they would be dead. <gasps> yeah, oh and then God. that's where Momo uh, makes something to protect everybody on her team so mm-hmm. that Todoroki and them don't get shocked in that attack. It's like there's an insulation sheet and she has like a ground, she like grounds them or something. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like Ida is kind of screwed still. 
they're all covered ish but i had missed this before whenever i'd uh, re-watched it or read it that momo made them all skates yes <laughs> did she i didn't even notice Lance, it's amazing <laughs> I was like, where was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, we have uh, Dark Shadow defended against uh, Kaminari's quirk there. And uh, you have a scene where Tokuyami is explaining that Dark Shadow is uh, really weak when there's uh, more sunlight. And you have a cute little scene where Dark Shadow's like, Violet saw nothing <laughs> when he's all timid because of the because <laughs> it's bright outside. Yeah, that was so cute. <laughs> and then I think really we come, uh, come in where Monoma comes in and... Uh, Baku was really mad. <laughs> <laughs> I put Baku go rage, and uh, you know he's got a scary face going on, and uh, mm-hmm. we find out that Monoma can copy other people's quirks. He uses uh his own uh his uh, Baku goes explosion against himself, and then he touches uh Kirishima's head, and then uh, we get Kirishima's quirk, and that just makes uh, Baku go angrier and angrier. <laughs> And I believe that's when he decides to change his strategy to uh, attack him instead of uh, Bak- uh, instead of Deku. Mm-hmm. And the kill count goes up again, so now it's at 11. Is it? Oh, man. <laughs> I love that for a second, Kirishima genuinely thought Monoma had both their quirks. <laughs> yeah. He was like, what? He's got both of our quirks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, the thing is, though, is that uh, Todoroki has, like, two quirks, kind of, so it wouldn't be... It would be a weird combo, but it could be possible. We cut to uh, Midori and uh, Todoroki's team, and uh, Deku's actually keeping his distance by being on uh, Todoroki's left side because that's his. I think that's his fire side, and you won't be able to freeze him without hitting uh, Ida that way. And then we have a uh, we have a scene where Shoto's father comments about. Uh, how foolish is for allowing Deku to exploit his weakness. And then we get uh, Ida comes in and says he has a special move and he uses a uh, recipro burst, I think. Mm, yeah. To unle- yeah, to unleash super speed. And before even Deku could react, they've already grabbed his headband. And that's a really mm-hmm. cool scene. I love that. It's just. You didn't even have a chance to react at all. <laughs> mm-hmm. I forgot that this is the first time we saw it. And I was just like, oh, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, it was early on in the series. But then that that comes with the price and his uh, Ida's engines actually stall him, which he can't move. Mm-hmm. So Deku wants to try to that do that to defeat him to defeat uh Todoroki. Oh, we do cut back to the B students too. Ooh. And we have, yeah, and they're fighting each other. And we have a uh, Subaraba has a quirk that I always thought was interesting with solid air, which mm-hmm. he would make like I don't really know how to explain his quirk, but he makes like I guess, like, solid barriers out of air. Mm-hmm. It's really useful. And like, it's he really... pushed aside a lot of people with his quirk. Like, that was much more useful than I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. It's really funny that Baku, he just, like, punches his way through instead of just, like, climbing over. Yeah. <laughs> and also, someone in the dub, they almost called Bakugo a son of a bitch. Did they? Yes, oh, they say? said they said son of a, which could be son of a gun, but it was like it was gonna be son of a bitch. Like, oh, <laughs> is son of a gun a good thing? No. Oh, it's like or a... I guess maybe. Uh, apparently, it's it originally is son of a military man. Son of a gun is a compliment. You're right. Um, back to my hero. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, um, Kendo's team are still stuck in Todoroki's ice. And spoiler, that's where they remain, and I'm not happy about it. <gasps> yeah, yeah their that team was pretty lame. A, their team was so good, and they just, like, got stuck. Yeah, and also made a note, too, that I guess he didn't get all the headbands at the, the first time, and uh, Bakugo's hitting Kaminari, or Kirishima on the head, like, bam, 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 bam. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Mm-hmm. But he comes up with a strategy to catch uh, Monoma, and he, he calls Sarah Elbow Guy. <laughs> Uh, and like, uh, Ashido is raccoon eyes. I wonder if he was yeah. Tanuki eyes in the Japanese one or something. Oh, I don't check, but yeah, he says raccoon eyes. He's like, my name's Ashido. <laughs> oh, what a dick! Like I wrote down, what a dick. <laughs> he is a dick. I was like, he's yeah. such a jerk in this like festival. He's just, uh he's the worst in this. He is. <laughs> but he comes up with a strategy to take all. Uh, I believe he takes all their headbands, if I remember correctly. 
cut to All Might talking about uh, Bakugo's tenacity. He says, "Those who aim for there's those who aim for the top, and those who settle, and that's the difference that matters." Mm-hmm. And uh, we have uh, where we go back to Deku and uh, Todoroki fighting, and Todoroki was about to use his uh, flame quirk. It looks like, mm-hmm. and Deku's talking about all for one and. Uh, Instead of actually hitting hitting uh, Todoroki, he kind of sw- uh, cuts the air and just kind of like cuts off his flames and uh, cu- catches uh, Todoroki by surprise. And Deku thinks he's got the 10 million points, so he goes straight for the I believe it's the top top headband or something, one of the headbands mm-hmm. to grab. And uh, he thinks he got all the points back, and everyone's like, "Uh." May looks at it and goes, "Uh, I don't think that's it." And then mm-hmm. we get revealed that it's 70 points. And then they have to go back and try to get the 10 million points. And Baku goes charging in as well. And he calls Todoroki, mm-hmm. hey, Icy Hot. <laughs> <laughs> but there, you know, the t- clock's ticking. And then as soon as time's up, you just see Bakugo just fall straight and hit his face <laughs> in the ground. <laughs> oh, amazing. So he was like, I'm not catching you. Screw you. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny, though. Just because just that scene prior, it looks all action-y. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> time's up. You just see Baku, bump. Uh, and you know he gets mad and he starts punching the ground he's like damn it damn it damn it mm-hmm. and that's the end of the well it is the end and then we find out that oh we get to we get a scene to where they were going to say that tetsu tetsu was team was going to win but it was actually shinzo's team and there's an allusion to shinzo's quirk when you see uh the people that he had for his team were all just looking around and you see ojiro too he's looking all confused which that's an allusion to what happens in next episode. Mm-hmm. And that's where we try to find out how who has who's in the top four. And we notice that Dark Shadow was able to catch, uh, was able to get Todoroki's headband. Mm-hmm. And that's where uh, Midoriya cries so hard, he power drives himself <laughs> into the ground. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's like... <laughs> and then a cute scene where Ochiko pets Dark Shadow. <laughs> mm-hmm. And May just gets right back to work repairing her, uh, the jetpack. Mm. Um, and we see Todoroki's team and they won but Ida still like apologizes because Momo thinks that it was too close to call so Ida's straight away like I'm so sorry it's my <sighs> fault she's like what <laughs> no it's not we, we won because of you um the other thing the little characterization that I saw that we like that I liked is that Sue we see Sue who's disappointed because she hasn't got through but she still goes over to Mina straight away and congratulates her for winning, which I thought was so lovely. Was she, like, huffing or something? <laughs> no. Yeah. So uh, it was, like, a little, like, she, Ugh. Like, and then she went to talk to her. Yeah, because she would be. Like, if you mm. didn't get free, if you were really disappointed for yourself, so you would be huffing. So she's disappointed. But then she goes to congratulate her friend, even though she's that disappointed. And I thought that was really nice. Mm. That's quite, a, like, a, a big thing to be able to do. Mm-hmm. And Ochako goes to Ida's like, you were hiding something from us. Or like, and she's also like doing running motions too, which is cute. Yeah, she's like. <laughs> <laughs> but right. then we find out that we're going to take a break. I get a one hour lunch and uh, you hear over the mic present. Mike's like, let's go grab a bite to eat. And Eraserhead's like, I'm taking a nap. <laughs> 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 but that's how the episode ends up. Well, no, not really, because we get that scene where uh, All Might and... Uh, endeavor or they look like they're about to talk about something and then we're trying to find out where deku is too towards the end and uh we see a scene where deku and todoroki are off to uh an entrance way looks like they're going to talk about something too dun, 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 dun. and that leads on to episode 19 the boy born with everything and it's just like listening to a dub is just really cool that like deku's line where it's like you brought me here now what it's so like kind of scared and like nervous mm-hmm and it's kind of like, is he going to confess to me? Is he going to, like, fight me? What's happening? Yeah. Uh, it's just some CD dark corner. There's not even any lights there. Yeah. <laughs> just all in the shade. Uh, and All Might is talking to Endeavor in buff form. I, I kind of like, or I don't know, I just, I love buff form All Might. And he's like, let's catch up. <laughs> and we then we kind of go over, so first was Todoroki, second was Bakugo, third was Shinso, fourth was Deku. Uh... And he's kind of saying, like, oh, your quirk, sorry, Todoroki is saying to Deku, your quirk reminded me of him, All Might. And it's kind of interesting that even when he was, like, using, like, non-lethal levels, like, against a person for, like, the second time, that it mm-hmm. still feels like All Might. 
And Deku's like, oh no, he's figured it out. And he asks, are you All Might's secret love child? <laughs> uh, which is just hard to imagine for All Might. And like, I, I'll kind of get into that in like the spoiler section a bit more, but it is just very funny. And Deku is shit at keeping secrets because he kind of implies that there is a secret. Mm-hmm. And then it cuts back to Endeavor and uh, All Might. And they haven't talked in 10 years, which is interesting because you'd think like they'd make the pros like work together more or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, Endeavor tries to walk away and All Might does the most dramatic flip of all time to get in front of him. Uh, and... <laughs> He makes, uh, I, sorry, I'm getting a bit, like, too detailed, but I just love it. He's like, why the cold shoulder? It's an amazing pun when the shoulder is literally on fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, Endeavor just thinks All Might's an idiot. And he kind of says something really weird. He's like, that's why I made him. Like, that's why I made, I made Todoroki. And it's also one of the few times that All Might stops smiling. Because he's like, what did you say? Yeah. I don't think... <laughs> I don't think he had any idea how much Endeavor hated him. Yeah. Like, I I think maybe he thought they were more, like, rivals a bit. And I don't think he was aware of this at all. That's um, not why he stopped smiling, though, is it? He, he stopped smiling because Endeavor said that's why he made he's, his son. He's not, not smiling exactly. because of Endeavor being a, a frosty bitch. Oh, yeah. No, it's because, <laughs> <laughs> it's because of him saying he made his son. Like, yeah. that's just ugh, on so many levels. Uh, and, uh, like, Endeavor really is trying to take down All Might until we cut back to Todoroki, who starts talking about quirk marriages, and as we do that, we get a shot of the kids, and it makes, the like, the shot of the kids just, like, hanging out, and I guess it's also Kaminari and Mineta doing their weird cheerleader plot, which puts oh, yeah. that in a different light as well, maybe, <laughs> but, like, basically people were forced into relationships to create, like, the ideal quirk, and he... We learn that Endeavor basically bought Todoroki's mom. And this makes mm-hmm. me wonder, like, how do you learn about her? Or maybe there's a quirk registry that he could search, like, ice people. And every memory Todoroki has of his mother, she's crying. And we learn that she is the one who gave him his scar. She poured boiling water on his face because the left side is unbearable. And it's just, ugh. Yeah, like, I kind of forgot how like horrifying Todoroki's backstory is Mm -hmm. and basically he's picking a fight to show what he's capable of they're capable of against All Might so it doesn't really have anything to do with it but anything to do with Deku which is kind of sad because like Deku's like trying his hard hardest but like Todoroki is kind of even aiming above him and he wants to take first that using fire and it's very interesting that Bakugo overhears all of this and he manages to stay, like, very chill. And Deku is kind of, like, going over this, being like, we're both in for the top. And Todoroki has more of a MC of, like, a comic book. And, like, has all this baggage. While Deku is just like, I want to be a hero because I like heroes and I like all my... But Todoroki seems to have a lot more depth. Uh, and Deku thinks, like, that he just made it there because of luck and because he was supported. And it's like... No, it's like, you, you're you a smart kid. <laughs> uh, but he owes it to everyone to support him, so he's not going to give up. And I just love that he declares war back on Todoroki, because like, mm-hmm. like it seems like back on Todoroki have all been like aiming at Deku, and Deku's like, I just want to go to school. Like, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he's like, I think like even like All Might was trying to like get him hyped up, and he was kind of like, okay, I'll try to be number one, but I'm still like a, a child. But his classmates kind of gave him that push. Uh, and Bakugo walks away, and I wonder if he's jealous that, like, Todoroki is, like, targeting him, or that, that like, Deku wasn't able to do that against him. Well, I guess, like, Deku has already, like, declared war on him as well, where he's like, fuck you, I can do it too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just love that they flew in American cheerleaders, apparently, which is, it's funny. <laughs> Uh, and we get to see a little bit of the other events. There's, like, a ball rolling one. There's a scavenger hunt, which is, like, really random things, like bags. Uh, Mineta yeah. got back fat. What back do you fat. do there? Do you grab a... Oh, <laughs> who do you 
Oh, just grab a fat Momo? person and be like, look at their back. But I don't know. <laughs> I don't really think that fat shaming is something you should encourage in teenagers. Yeah, I guess they're just like, we hate you. You take this or you lose. I mean, back uh, fat was a uh, food in the 1800s for pioneers, uh, but. Ah, <laughs> uh, and we learn that Mineta and Kaminari tricked the girls into wearing cheer uniforms, and it just kind of shows like how naive Momo is because it's like, oh, the school wants us to wear uniforms, but like you have to make them yourself. But it's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> They should go for it hard. Yes, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's kind of funny, and it's like, Momo, please, don't trust anything She's like, that comes out of me next now. She was like, how do I always fall for his schemes? <laughs> I'm like, poor Momo. Uh, and we learn that it's going to be, the finals are always a one-on-one competition, but it's not always like a quirk battle. It, last year it was a foam sword battle, which is like, how do you show off your quirk using that? I don't know, but I still want to see that. <laughs> Yes, honestly, same. Uh, and Ojiro drops out because he had no memory of the cavalry battle. He doesn't want to just be a puppet, which, okay. Uh, and he, it's interesting that's because he's like pride. Uh, and a short kid who I like, won't say is quirk because we don't know it yet withdraws. And then Kendo's entire team also withdraw because they were, they were next. They came fifth. But they said that they were just stuck in the ice the whole time, so they don't think that they should advance. Yeah, but somehow they still managed to come fifth, and they declined as well. So six people declined. I know, and it's interesting. Aoyama's like, nope, I'm staying in. Screw this. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, good for you, Aoyama. And yeah. I wonder how they chose, because Ayabara and Tetsu, 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 Tetsu. But like, how they choose? Like, did they flip a coin? I think the team members said that they are the ones that should go forward because they yeah. did the most. So, like, we saw that Ibarra, she's the one that took um, the headband from Mineta. So her quirk was obviously useful. She felt um, bad about so, it, apparently. <laughs> yeah, she regretted it. But um, I think the team were like, you two are the best. You go. Mm-hmm. And that's how they chose. And we learn a bit of what the fights are going to be. It's going to be the copies against each other, which I love that it's kind of like our quirks are basically the same. And also Aoyama versus a Shindo, which will be interesting. Uh, Midoriya is fighting Shinso, and he's like, hmm, what's that about? And we kind of get a reminder, Shinso is general studies, and he tries to, like, casually talk to Deku. But Ojiro is like, nope! And I just love that he covers his mouth with his tail. It's <laughs> very cute. Who? Oh, I think, oh, it's it's written, like, Todoroki says, like, you better advance, Midoriya. I'll beat you with one hand. Which is kind of like saying, I can beat you with my one hand tied behind my back. Mm-hmm. which is like a little rude and Bakugo is against Uraraka and he doesn't know who she is <laughs> oh my god fuck. Uh, and then people want to ship them together <laughs> yeah honestly I can see I honestly I can see it because he learns their names he, he finally starts saying Kirishima's name in the last episode so what can happen I, here I think Kirishima has more of a chance with Bakugo than Uraraka has a chance for, with Bakugo <laughs> for sure uh, and but, yeah. we learned that May and Bakugo have something in common. They both don't know people's names. At least May has the excuse of being in a different class because she calls mm-hmm. Ida legs. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, oh, that almost feels like flirtatious. <laughs> Where it's like, hey, legs. But that's just this quirk. And they do fireworks at day t- in the daytime, which is like, not that, you can't see them that much. Like, it's not that cool. Uh, and then they do get into the scavenger hunt a bit again, and Kendo does the greatest burn of all time to Monoma with her, with me, like, if you're not busy, come with me. And it just says, like, she needed a perverse person. <laughs> and aren't scavenger hunts usually, like, looking for, like, hidden things or being, like, look, like, you'd have to look for, like, a red pole that's, like, over on, like, the side or something? It's so hidden in the audience. Yeah. Yeah. And also, like, are they going to return the bag? Like, how do you get your bag back? I don't know. <laughs> I hope um, so. And Deku isn't participating in the scavenger hunt or any of the games, which means we don't get to see them that much, which made me sad. Uh, Tokoyami is climbing a tree for some reason and just, like, channeling his inner bird. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Bakugo faced against a wall for an hour. Hyping himself up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And Ida just drinks a lot of orange juice, which I love because if his, like, engine is powered by it, which is, like, a cute detail that I always forget. 
And we see Samantha setting up the tournament stage. And it just means like he's a god in the city because cement is everywhere. Yeah. Uh, And I really love the kind of mental imagery that Deku uses where he's kind of like combining the egg in the microwave and the sensation of attacking the villain and is trying to combine those together. And All Might is like, what are you talking about? You're good. And he just, he does this weird thing where he slaps both his head, top of his head and his chin, making him basically bite his tongue. Mm-hmm. Saying like, there's no such thing as luck, which I think is like, I don't know, it's a really nice thing to say. And he kind of points out like, you could only use max 5%. And like, sometimes the percentages confuse me a little bit, but I don't know. And just saying like, when scared or nervous, just smile. And every time that happens, I just think about how Sophie, is it like smiling weird or like if you're just smiling and like Britain is like what are you doing or is there something like that <laughs> what I don't know I think you're saying that like didn't Walmart or something to, like have like oh p- people gotta like smile at all the customers and people are like what oh are you doing? yeah in um when they tried to move to like the UK and I think Germany as well mm-hmm. they tried to get everyone like the service people to treat to act the same as they do in America which mm. is a bad idea because we're, like, we're not up for that. So they wanted everyone to greet them, be like, "Hi, have a good day." And everyone was like, "No, why are you being so rude to me? I don't need your sarcasm. Leave me alone. I can find I things on my this. own. I'm not an idiot." Yeah. So it just, but they it just... had to completely change their whole policy. Thank you for that. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I just imagine that, like, all oh, like coming to Britain, it would just he'd be people be like, "Are you like sassing me right now? What's happening?" Uh. And I, the line was like, don't forget, I'm counting on you. Or I think oh. is that I think that's All Might talking. And it's like, that's, it's very, very cute. Uh, and we learn for the uh, fights that you have to immobilize them or force, immobilize them, force them out of the ring, or they have to cry uncle. But you can't do life-threatening injuries. <laughs> it's like, sorry. Uh, or I guess Bakugo can just like injure people, but his explosions are kind of scary and same for ashy though she just melts people oh so they point out that uh heroes use their powers to throw people into jail not to kill and you want to show how strong your spirit is and then we get the start of the shinso versus deku fight and he calls ojiro a monkey and deku is not having it mm-hmm. and he then he immediately responds and chins is like I win. And Oger is like, I warned him, and he still did it. Uh, and he's completely frozen, and then I just wrote keyboard smashes, because <laughs> I was like, god damn it, Deku. But, I don't know, I think it's kind of, how do you guys, how did you guys like these three episodes? Um, so I liked these episodes. The the cavalry battle is, I don't know, it's fun. It, I thought it was mostly just a teaser, just wanted to try and find out more about class 1b's quirks and we don't really see them but mm-hmm. it was definitely good fun and I d- it goes really quick for just it's basically just two episodes because 19 is kind of a chat episode mm. so that's really quick yeah and like i don't know i wanted to see more of the side games honestly <laughs> same they could have made like a an episode of that if they wanted to or like half an episode of it just to you know to film it to pad it out but they kind of this is just kind of in the background. Yeah, like what do you get if you win? Like I don't know, that would've been cool. Overall, I liked it. I think like it was kind of cool just to see the cavalry battle, like kind of the big players playing against each other and seeing like, oh, Class B actually is the threat, and like we still don't know much about them. Uh, May gets a chance to shine, which is nice that we kind of get to see more of her. Mm-hmm. Um. I, I like to see, like, the kind of different, real, like, friendships that are building up. Like, this is kind of where we get to see a bit more of Bakugo and Kirishima becoming friends. And, like, Deku kind of expanding people he talks to besides, like, Ochiko and Ida. And just, like, different rivalries. I don't know. I love the different, like, dynamics, like, uh, Asui and Su, which is kind of cute. Finding out about Tokiyami was pretty cool because we hadn't really seen him very much. And it's such an interesting quirk. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Like, I think I remember when I was, like, catching up with a manga, people were like, wait, who's this guy with a bird head in the background? And that's why I, like, started it, because I kept seeing people posting about My Hero and event, and they started talking about this bird head guy, and it's like, okay, I need to read this. What's happening? 
<laughs> so that might have been maybe one of the first times that he really got to shine. He probably got to, did like a so he did some stuff in season one as well, but we're kind of getting to know more about them. And nineteen is a bit more of a talky one, but I love that we it kind of parallels Deku and uh, Todoroki, and then Endeavor and All Might, and kind of how that plays out, and just like. It's just, I don't know, Todoroki's backstory just makes me very sad. And I just, it reminds me how much I hate Endeavor. And mm-hmm. and I guess, like, the cheerleader thing is just, like, it's a it's like a nice humor moment, but it just feels weird in, like, a really dramatic episode. And then, I don't know, we get to see, like, a bit of the start of the Shinso Deku thing, but we don't really... We don't even really know what his quirk is. We just know, like, if you talk back to him, apparently you freeze up. And it's like, what does that mean? Da, 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 da. James, what did you think? I really liked all these episodes. It was, you know, really fun. And, like, we, we didn't get as much as the other characters, though, like uh, Kendo's team or nothing. They were just kind of shoved in the background, mm. unfortunately. But, yeah, like uh, like Kendra was saying, you know, uh, we get to see how Deku kind of breaks out and starts uh making friends and stuff but i don't know i really liked it and i kind of wanted to watch more episodes now that uh, <laughs> i was watching it again i was like i'm gonna watch this whole thing again <laughs> i felt more disappointed that we didn't see more of class 1b after we learned that they had a game plan mm-hmm. yes and i think do we want to get into the spoilers a bit so we can talk about who in class b paired up with each other yes okay so if you are, do not read the manga do not listen on there was one team, there were two teams of just two people. Mm-hmm. So Beast and um, the guy that creates the scales from his skin, mm-hmm. they teamed up together and he was just riding on Beast's back. <laughs> I think that's probably the best way to use Beast, though, is just to mm-hmm. go on his back because he's so big and clunky that how he, you can't really use him anywhere else in a team. You can't fit more than one person on his back. Mm-hmm. So it's probably quite a good idea. And then Scales with his like long range abilities, quite a good team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how you would use the Scales to win. You Slice could... off people's headbands and just pick it up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the second team, the only other team of just two, is Pony and uh, you know the insect boy with the razors coming out of his mouth. Mantis. The other one, That's what I wrote yes. down. <laughs> who is also part of the um, the emo team. With Tokiyami mm-hmm. and and I love which, that that sorry at one point like Pony is like running like an actual pony <laughs> like mm-hmm. on all fours yeah because he goes on her back and I think it's interesting that she gave Shoji so much stick for the way that he looks and then she's just fine with the praying mantis mm-hmm. but yeah so they were a team which again is a pretty good idea you could have probably used Pony with more people and if you put her at the back with like strong back pony legs mm-hmm. as like mm-hmm. stability to keep the team and the person on top up right that might also work but she then she wouldn't be able legs. to use her horns i think she just has horns no she's got hooves oh she does i forgot yeah, yeah she's got hooves for, for oh hooves. you're right she has hooves she kind of has like weird curved like mm-hmm. horse legs but then i guess if you had her at the back the person on top would be at risk of hitting her horns like if yeah. they if they went backwards they'd land on them this looks mm-hmm. like that would be really dangerous <laughs> yeah so yeah. this is probably the best way to utilize her um and then the next team is cementine the glue guy mm-hmm. with size the most boring of all the women <laughs> and manga which sounds like they would be a great team but how would how would manga use his quirk to not just obliterate someone yeah, there's no on a matter peer that could just take a headband away <laughs> Yeah. Super glue like got to do a little bit, but it would I don't know. And size girl also like she doesn't she needs like something to throw and like change yeah. sizes. Yeah. Yeah. Sventine did some stuff, but not not a huge amount. He could have probably stuck people in the ground with his glue the same way Todoroki did with his ice. But we know oh. that he's really um he's really quiet, isn't he? I think. Mhm. So maybe he got scared that he would hurt people with his glue. Ah. Oh. I don't know. And it's not but. class B, but I wonder why Shinso chose like two punch Oji- Ojiro and Aoyama. Like why them? 
twin impact, he's quite strong, mm. I think. Um, he went for a very... Because Ojiro's uh, a fighter as well, isn't he? I think his hobby is martial arts. Mm. So he went for a very martial arts heavy team and then Aoyama. Maybe they ha- he just got there after everyone had been picking mm-hmm. and they were the ones that were left. And I wonder, I wish we'd seen, gotten like a little cut of like what they actually did to steal stuff. Maybe he just like talked to people and was like, give me your headband. And they're, or like he just like said, hey, what's like, he just like, right, I'm going to get you. And they're like, no. And then he's like, give me your headband. Like, okay. Maybe. Yeah. yeah cause- because it was kind of a surprise too. We thought Tetsu Tetsu's team was gonna was gonna win, and then all of a sudden we got it was Shinzo's team. Mm-hmm. It was kind of in the background, I guess. The next team is we get um, Black is with Monoma and Solidaire, and he didn't really Black didn't do anything. I call him Black because yeah. that's his work name, and I can't remember his full name. <laughs> Vanta Black is his Vanta name. Vanta Black, but he I can't remember what we didn't see him do anything. Yeah, he was just kind of there. I guess it was it was in the sun in the broad daylight, so there's not really any darkness that he can slink in with. Mm-hmm. He can't hide into any darkness that was there. Mm-hmm. Um, the next team, the best team, who somehow <laughs> got relegated to the ice, was Mushroom, Kendo, Lizard Tailcut, and then Poltergeist. How mm-hmm. did they get stuck in the ice with their quirks? <laughs> Kendo, could, she was on top. So, but she surely her big hands could just smash the ice. This little tail cut can break herself into little pieces. Could mm-hmm. she not break herself into something smaller, get free, and then help everyone else out? Like poltergeist, mushroom. How did they not? I don't know. Yeah. I guess uh, Horikoshi just chose the characters that he wanted to showcase. But yeah, mm. I forget what team but... was Hananuke on. He was with Weldy. Joe's, he's on the only other team that I have. Um, oh, sorry. He's on the only other team that I haven't said yet. Sorry. Because I, 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 I didn't write they them because I think I wrote them down up above. And I was like, wait, where are they in my notes? Sorry. I just know you love him. Um, yes. <laughs> so the last team, Tetsu Tetsu, Weldy, Josu Hononuke, and Ibarra. Their team is the best team. Like, I'm surprised they didn't do better. Mm-hmm. I will fight your best team with <laughs> my lizard tail cut team. Because, <laughs> like, Weldy should have just welded his headband to himself. Tetsu Tetsu is, like, can be, like, the attacky person. Hananuke gets people off balance. And, uh, like, it's Vine right. Girl can just, like, grab vines off of people. They should have done so much better. They did come fifth. Mm-hmm. No, sixth. Because they only got in because, like, six people dropped out, so two of them yeah. got to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they went. They came sixth. They were up there, though. They were fourth at one point. Until Wait, Shinzo could, kind of overtook. Couldn't uh, Hananuke just soften the ice? Yeah! Like, they what? weren't stuck. They were mobile when they were moving around. Oh, uh, true. I don't know. I don't know why they didn't do better. You raise a good point. Weldy should have just like I if Weldy didn't maybe Weldy didn't weld the headbands on because he's like I have honor and it's like no Weldy no honor in battle yeah who knows hopefully the next next year if we get another sport um another sports sports tournament we'll see more of one B hopefully I I don't know the class A versus class B made me so happy like. It made me fall in love with Hadanuke because before I just like, thought he was scary skull man and I was like, what is happening? Yeah, <laughs> but, I think it might be my favourite arc. Yes, it's so good. Um, uh, what other spoilers were there? Um, oh, Ojiro having like that really honour, like, oh, I won't be used as a puppet. It makes me think, because I was kind of thinking he might be the traitor just because he's so like normal and like his room is like very boring and just like very ordinary. But mm-hmm. this makes me think, like, I don't think he would want to be used by someone like that. So may- that makes me think maybe he's not the traitor. Or oh, that's what he wants you to think. He wants everyone to think he's an outstanding citizen. Mm-hmm. And also, maybe <laughs> Monoma, I wonder if his quirk is could be used kind of like all for one. Like, maybe if he trains his quirk, like, 
It just it's it's very similar to All for One is all that he can like use a quirk, but he can't like stop someone from using it. Mm-hmm. So I wonder like I wonder if that'll come into play ever. I I don't know. Um, I don't think I had anything else. Oh, because does Deck? I forget. Does Deco know about All for One yet, or does he find out later? Uh, he doesn't know yet. Yeah. yeah. And I guess yeah, that's no. like. All my shit told him, because, like, I, that's why Deku doesn't have any urgency, really. Because he, he thinks, like, oh, I still have time, and just, like, I can go to school and stuff. But I guess he wanted him to have some, like, semblance of normalcy for as long as, as, long as possible. Mm-hmm. Like, he's like, who's just got his quirk, and he's just got into this super school. And all these big things are being thrown at him. So it'd be quite a lot to be like, oh, on top of that, this is my arch nemesis that my quirk has been battling against for maybe a hundred or so years. Next is your turn. He killed my master. He nearly killed me. <laughs> He's going to be <laughs> coming for you. Congrats. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, but I also like that it kind of introduces us to the idea that like Deku and Todoroki might go against each other. And so it like gets us, I may be so hyped because like the best fight is Todoroki versus Deku. Mm-hmm. And it's just interesting where Midnight's like, oh, like, injuries are fine. We have, like, Recovery Girl here. It's like, no, you don't understand. Don't say that to Deku. He'll break all of his arms. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, poor Deku destroying his body. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Now he's destroying his legs. Yes. I don't know. He hasn't. Has he broken his legs? He only broke his legs in the USJ. I think he's been good with his legs. Yeah. And I I don't know. Did he end up getting those... uh, shock absorbers for his shoes mm-hmm. so, so that might help yeah hopefully he won't do probably he'll probably do it again though but now he's doing like a little bit with his hands where he does like kind of the flicky thingy mm-hmm. but uh, i don't know it's cool to see how like how much deku has evolved i was like oh yeah back then he could like only he couldn't like do anything without breaking his arms but now he's like he's by our son has done so well oh <laughs> mm-hmm. uh. I think that's the end of our anime section. Yes. Ah, oh, but we did get an email. Indeed. Um, would anyone in particular like to read this email out? Okay, well, we got an email from uh, Dognija, and he says, Hello there, MHA pod. First time writing. My traitor theory is Aoyama is a traitor. Why would he be the traitor, you ask? <laughs> because All for One made an offer that he will give him a better quirk that doesn't have as big of the side effects as this current one as this current one has. So he's basically saying that, you know, uh, all for one or one for all gave him a better deal. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he says all that Alma has to do is give him give all for one the information he needs to help Shigaraki. Which I mean, yeah, that kind of does make make sense. Like that'd be a good way to have a mole in in the in the uh, at UA. Mm-hmm. But he says that after, but after that, Aoyama witnessing that his actions uh, have done to his classmates during the training camp arc, he would have regrets towards that, and he did inform that Izuku will go out to save Bakugo. Or he didn't inform. Yeah, he didn't inform him. He says also him befriending Iz- Izuku is perhaps his way of an apology towards Deku for getting hurt in the villain fight. And he's asking for our thoughts on it. That's hilarious if that's what he thinks is an apology. I mean, I've been giving the villains all this information and they could have died in this attack, but um, do you know what? I'll be friends with him and now it's all fine. <laughs> Here's some cheese. I was going to say that. I was going to say he offers them some cheese. <laughs> uh, but I, I kind of do like it. I, I guess my tw- like, tweaking thing a bit would be that maybe Aoyama didn't have a quirk at all and then uh, All for One gave him the quirk. And now he's kind of, but he's kind of, it's like flawed, so he can kind of hold that over him and like promise him a better one. But then on the counter side of it is that Aoyama is the reason, like Aoyama did like a surprise laser shoot, because villains were originally trying to take both Bakugo and Tokoyami, which is really funny to me. They just went after Tokoyami because like, he's emo, so they're like, he'll probably join the villains. I thought they <laughs> they just tried to get whoever Anybody. was there. Oh no, um, Tokoyami just took out um, he'd taken out Moonfish, so he'd proven how strong he was. Mm. So that's why they took him. I don't think they thought, ah, oh, here's an emo companion, <laughs> an emo comrade. <laughs> <laughs> True, uh, but but he so he saved it. 
Yeah, he saved Tokoyami, but I don't, I don't know. It's like, what do you think, Sophie? Is your son a traitor? I think that he, I quite like that idea. The only thing is that we see Aoyama be terrified so often, mm-hmm. even in like the side of the screen. And I think if you're going to pretend to be a terrified person, that that's some real dedication to acting, to be, mm-hmm. to even when no one's looking at you, to be standing in the corner like, oh, I'm scared of doing this. So if he is the traitor, you would be terrified of talking to, either he would be terrified of talking to All for One, mm-hmm. and I don't think that would make stop him doing that, or he's pretending to be terrified all the time, and it's a really good cover. Or he's terrified that he'll blow his cover, so it's like being terrified, I don't, I don't know. But mm. he's scared all the time of everything, like even asking <laughs> him back to go to be on his team, he's like pooing himself. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. Mm. Uh, James, what are your thoughts? I really don't want any of the students to be the traitors, oh. but um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like really like it just seems kind of weak, like a weak argument saying that he got his quirk from uh, off for one. I don't think so. I think he just got cheese in the deal. <laughs> mm-hmm. We've but, seen a, a flashback uh-huh. to him when he was really young and he got the belt. Yeah. And he must mm-hmm. have been like eight years old or something in that because he's very small and his parents got him it as a present so that would be young to be making a deal with a big old villain Maybe, but like yeah. your quirk develops at four so is he just like pooping his pants like cons or like just like shooting lasers all the time for four years or did he not have a quirk for four years and then got one at eight maybe he is a late bloomer that, that would explain why he has his control for it isn't very good you know Mm-hmm. I just think that like him being like, oh, we're the same and like kind of having quirks that hurt us is interesting because we haven't really seen that for anybody else. Have we? Uh, Not it outright causing them physical harm, except for maybe Kirishima when he first developed it and he cut oh, his, yeah. his shot, his uh, eyebrow. But there's been no one like <laughs> Rose. Shot his who, eyebrow? Shot his eye. He cut his eyebrow. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, it's definitely, it's it's interesting theory, and like, I think in the latest, ep- in a few episodes ago, and they're like, oh, I guess there isn't a traitor. It's like, oh no, there definitely is. But I think maybe, I do like the idea of maybe the traitor got really, really scared by what happened at the training camp arc, mm. and like the resulting fight, and now they're not cooperating or something. That's such a clever idea. Why has no one else thought about this before? Well, what a, what a good idea that they were along with the villains and then they changed their mind, which is why we've not heard from them. Mm-hmm. Such, a, such a good idea and such a simple <laughs> idea, but no one else thought of it. And that's all, folks. Uh, t- next week, we're going to get a manga chapter again. Yay. Mm-hmm. And I'm really excited to see more. I, it's kind of it, weird watching this and like just after Endeavor started to be like, not a giant asshole who I hate with my whole body mm-hmm. and I'm kind of reminded that oh yeah I do hate him and like we, we haven't even gotten when uh like I forgot that in flashback we didn't see when he like just punches a four-year-old in the stomach but I think we get that during the Midoriya versus Todoroki that comes fight later. yeah but I don't know it's interesting to see how Endeavor is going to continue to be handled but anyways, we're going. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Sniper of My Heart. I have another podcast uh, at Haikyuu Pod where I talk about Haikyuu and we cry. I think that's the next series I'm going to try to read because. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> I think oh, Sophie I uh, or Sophie, uh-huh. do you re- you read? Are you ma- anime only for Haikyuu or do you read the manga? I forget. No, I loved the anime, but the manga I just couldn't get into the art style of it. <laughs> Season oh. four is coming soon, but yes. James, please read or watch Haikyuu. Okay, I'll try it. I, I read uh, all the vigilantes. Yay! Yay! <laughs> but where can we find you, James? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at that one welder guy. And if uh, you're a fan of Doctor Stone, I have a uh, Doctor Stone podcast. It's called Kicking Stones, and you can mm-hmm. find that at at Doctor Stone Pod. Mm-hmm. That's about it. <laughs> Sophie, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at Choppers Atlas. You can find the podcast at MHA Pod. You can email us at myheropod at gmail.com and our website www.mhapod.com. Woo! And also just a little promo that on October 6th, we're going to be on the One Piece podcast. 
So it was a few weeks away still, but woo. Woo, woo, Lucky ducks. (laughs) Yay. (laughs) Uh, But okay, what's a good segue into (laughs) the off go beyond? Um, Stay atop of your horses, go straight, (laughs) and don't knock off anyone else, and go beyond. Plus, Plus Ultra. 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 This is 